Day there viewers, my name is Cliff and welcome to my channel called Vintage Time. In today's episode of How to Cut Gemstones, I'll be featuring garnet from the Hearts Range from the Northern Territory in Australia. So this video will tie in with two other videos, one I've made in the past called How to Cut Gemstones Disaster, the gem from hell and I'll throw in a photo of that video and it will link up with a forthcoming video that I've got all the footage for already and this is about a zircon that I actually cut before this stone and we're going to be talking about filled gemstones. So let's move on to cutting this and I'll explain a bit more about these videos later. So the garnet has been glued to the dob stick which is placed in a transfer jig and I'll let that sit overnight so the glue can properly bond to the garnet. So the previous garnet I cut before which I call the gem from hell in the disaster video I became very suspicious later on that there was something terribly wrong with that gem where little shards would just pop out of it when I'm cutting it like little pieces of glass fragmenting out of it. Now I've cut so many gems in my lifetime where they've had veils, inclusions and cracks and usually you can cut through them and they polish up well and they can even look really good. Anyway, I've just recently cut a zircon and I had issue after issue and both these gems came from the same source, the garnet from hell and the zircon and from the same dealer. So currently I'm rounding out the girdle and I'm just lowering the mast a little bit. Now to let you know this particular garnet does have inclusions in it and it also has provenance about it. It was found by my father in the Hearts Range. So both the garnet in the previous video and the zircon in the following video, both of them were sourced from Africa. Both came from the same dealer out of Thailand and in my opinion both were filled with a product to hide the inclusions as you could not see them under a light or when oil was on them. So the girdle of the garnet has been rounded out and the intent is to cut it in the same style as the zircon in the following video where in my opinion it's been filled and you'll see how well it's been filled. But this is also to prove that you can actually cut a gem with veils or inclusions with no hassle at all.
So the first set of pavilion facets have been polished on Perspex with a 14,000 grit diamond paste and this is really known to be a commercial grade polish. So what you see me doing here, I'm cleaning the side where I use a 14,000 grit commercial grey diamond polish and then I'm going to flip the disc over and go one step further and use a 50,000 diamond paste. Now I'm very fastidious when it comes to cleaning and I'm cleaning it really properly, making sure I don't get contamination and I always use on one side the 14,000 grit diamond paste and on the other side it will always be the 50,000 and by keeping the same disc it means I don't need to adjust any heights on my mast or cheat I can just fly through all the indexes and polish really quickly it just makes sense but make sure you have clean tidy habits when you're faceting so the Perspex disc has been flipped over and to make sure that the 50,000 grit diamond paste side is properly clean once again get out the tissue paper or toilet paper and give it another clean with the methylated spirits and then you're all set to go to polish. So I'm about to smear some 50,000 grit diamond paste on the Perspex disc and between these transitions from the 14,000 to the 50,000 grit diamond polishes I've actually cleaned my hands once again we're talking about contamination issues so it's important to wash your hands and make sure you don't have any of the previous diamond paste on your fingers So I'm going to cut the next set of pavilion facets. Interestingly enough, the next set of pavilion facets, they call them the main facets, but many faceters like myself love to cut the first 16 facets and then break those facets with the next eight. So the next group of pavilion facets have been cut with a very worn 3000 grit diamond disc and they're almost been cut down to the girdle line, not quite. Now this is a continuous girdle so there are going to be no facets on the girdle so it's going to be a round girdle. So like I did before, I'm going to polish these facets with the 14000 grit diamond paste and then I'm going to flip the disc over and polish the facets again with a 50,000 grit diamond paste and it's also easy because I've just cut the facets I've left it at a similar angle so I don't have to bother with resetting angles and just put the disc on, polish, flip, polish, all done very easy So in this section of the video I'll be cutting the crown and unfortunately this crown has a very low profile and sometimes that's the way it is, you've just got to work with what you've got. Also when you see this section of the video now you'll notice that the top of the crown is almost crated out so that means it's going to have quite a large table. 
So we're getting closer to the end of the video and with the narration, but I'll be adding subtitles. And the whole point of this video was to prove that you can cut a gem with fractures or inclusions or veils without it disintegrating on you like the previous garnet. Also stand by for the next video where I'll be featuring a zircon that's filled with some sort of product. From my perspective, I won't be buying off eBay anymore or from any dealer that are unreliable. I'll just stick with the dealers that are reliable all the time and also I'll be finding my own gems. So stand by for another one of those videos where I go out prospecting and looking for gems. Also stand by for the final reveal where you get to see this gem and you'll see that it comes out pretty good. It's not as perfect as I would like it but nonetheless I think it was okay for the type of issues I've had with this gem. Anyway it's over now for me and until next time, take care everybody and it's bye for now.